Uh, what are the medium and long-term prospects for the dollar? The medium prospects of the dollar are bad, right? Uh, look, it's very simple. If you look at the dollar over the last, not year, but the last 15, 20 years, it's lost a third of its value worldwide. And now it goes up and down. It's, you know, it's one of these curves that bumps all the time, but it's been a steady down, right? Uh, and I, I am firmly of the belief that a strong currency is better than a weak currency always. The U.S., when it really dominated the world situation, had a very strong currency. Don't give me this business where you can't sell your stuff. You can buy the stuff. I mean, that's the point of a, of a, 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 of a strong currency. So the, the currency is floating down. The Chinese, of course, have a big investment in the U.S. currency at the moment. For one thing, they have a big stock of, uh, of, of, of dollar investments in, in, in the treasury and so forth. So the Chinese have to look at it as, uh, uh, I'm losing money as the dollar goes on down, but I don't want to cause a panic, right? So I have to withdraw just carefully, slowly, bit by bit, uh, in order not to have a run on the bank. And that's, I think, what they're doing just now. You see that the latest thing just in the last few days is that they're going to appreciate the renminbi 1%, 2%, well, that's, that's a mechanism of, of slow withdrawal. But they don't do it 10% or 15%. Actually, you know, there's, there's a lot of... The, if they hadn't invested all this money in, 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 in the U.S. bonds, they might be willing to appreciate the renminbi immediately, but they can't. So um, it's like any stock market thing, right? If, if you knew the perfect moment, you'd do it, but nobody knows the perfect moment. So everybody's scared and acts in a gingerly way. But if you want a prediction, five years or ten years from now, the dollar will be worth a lot less than it's worth now. So it will go down. And when it goes down enough, uh, at that point it's, it's going to cease being the reserve currency uh, of the world and it won't be replaced by another reserve currency. That's the point. Nobody's ready to step in. The euro isn't ready. The renminbi isn't ready. And certainly the British pound or the Swiss franc isn't ready. So we're going to have a multi-currency situation. A multi-currency situation is like a multipolar uh, geopolitical situation. It's uncertain. You don't know if you've got money where do you put your money? Do you put it in one currency or the other? What's going to happen? Well, you're unsure. And in fact, it'll be uh, up and down all the time. And that's very unsettling for the market, for, for, for you and me as ordinary people, you know, just, just do what stocks do we buy if we have enough money to buy even a few stocks, but it's certainly for, 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 for big capital and for governments a, a big problem. So that's part of the chaos that will come. We will have uh, a situation within five or ten years of no reserve currency in the world, meaning no safe haven. There's no place where you can place your money and be sure that's safe, right? That's what a reserve currency is, it's a safe haven. And if there isn't a safe haven, well, we're all in it together, you know? I mean, when, and you'll make one set of decisions, I'll make another set of decisions, the third guy will make a third set of decisions. And who knows how that comes out? We don't know. No one knows. And so that, uh, you know, that's called chaos. That's what you mean exactly by chaos. Uh, and the more, uh, that's part of what I think of as the structural crisis of, of, of the capitalist world economy at this point.